So what exactly is the conflict between Elon Musk and Twitter? Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, has teased consumers and followers all around the world with the introduction of his new social media website, X.com. This is every detail we've gathered thus far. Without further ado, let's dig into what we know about Elon Musk teases on social media. Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla, has tempted fans and followers worldwide with the launch of his new social media website, X.com. Despite his ongoing legal struggle with Twitter, X.com was the domain name of Musk's venture, which subsequently merged with financial services giant PayPal. Musk said X.com when asked if he had contemplated creating his social network if the Twitter deal went through. Elon Musk said he would buy back Tesla shares if the Twitter deal fell through after selling nearly $7 billion in Tesla and SpaceX equity. When a user on the microblogging site asked if he had sold all of his Tesla stock, the tech billionaire replied positively, Yes, it is crucial to avoid an emergency sale of Tesla stock in the hopefully unlikely event that Twitter forces this deal to close. And certain equity partners fail to come through, Musk announced on Twitter. Meanwhile, an answer to another user's query, Will you rebuy Tesla shares if the Twitter takeover fails? Yes. Musk said. Musk reportedly sold 7.92 million business shares for $6.88 billion. According to SEC filings, Musk made the purchases between August 5th and August 9th, following Tesla's 2022 annual shareholder meeting on August 4th in Austin, Texas. Musk and Twitter are embroiled in a legal battle over the termination of the $44 billion acquisition deal, which is set to commence on October 17th in a U.S. court. Moving on, Tesla's challenge to the California agency in the Fremont racism issue was denied. When Tesla launched a complaint against the California Office of Administrative Law, OAL, and the Department of Fair Employment and Housing, DFEH, in early June, it expected to win, accusing the agencies of rushing to bring lawsuits against firms without completing investigations. The OAL dismissed the accusation in mid-August August, according to a new report. The DFEH, renamed the Department of Civil Rights DCR, earlier this month, filed a complaint against Tesla in February, accusing the company of widespread racism at its Fremont, California plant. Racial harassment of this nature was first recorded in 2012. However, late last year, a court ordered Tesla to pay former employee Owen Diaz a $137 million penalty for racist abuse at the facility. The amount was reduced to $15 million in 2022, and Diaz and Tesla will return to court in March 2023. Tesla was dissatisfied with the outcome of the case or the settlement. In June, Tesla formally filed a lawsuit against the OAL and DCR, stating that the two institutions hurried to launch a suit against the company without conducting essential investigations. Following Tesla's appeal to discontinue the case in April, the DCR has been requested to investigate Tesla on more than 50 occasions by individuals who believe they were discriminated against or harassed. Reuters reports that the OAL has formally dismissed the challenge, noting that the agency's decision in no way reflects the merits of Tesla's appeal. Well, what are your thoughts in this matter? Please leave a remark. Following that, the Tesla Giga Shanghai has been impacted by the hot wave and drought. According to CNN, China China's heat wave and drought have compelled provincial administrations to impose energy and water restrictions. The catastrophe primarily impacted the Sichuan region in south central China. Due to the severity of the situation, even Shanghai, 1,200 kilometers distant, is feeling the effects. Sichuan province's administration has ordered that local companies remain closed until Saturday, extending the previous five day restriction. To begin with, there has been a significant drop in rainfall in the region, causing damage to hydroelectric plants that provide significant power to the province and the rest of China. Second, the heat wave has raised electricity consumption while lowering water levels, preventing energy generation. Manufacturing has ended or stalled at 16 companies, including SAIC, China's largest manufacturer, Toyota, which has a plant in Sichuan province, and Tesla, which has a factory in Shanghai. This is Giga Shanghai's 
second major setback this year, following China's COVID ban in March. The magnitude of the production fault is unclear. Many residents were angered when the city asked Sichuan province for extra electricity, claiming that the province's existing power was being used for high-priority works. According to CNN, the heat wave has caused temperatures to rise beyond 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which can be lethal. The Yangtze, China's largest river, has plummeted so dramatically that 70 municipalities have declared drought. Furthermore, because the river feeds China's most potent hydropower project, the Three Gorges Dam, electricity output would almost surely plummet, exacerbating the power crisis and necessitating rationing. As a result, China must decide how long it will continue to operate. Next up, Bank Australia intends to phase out loans for ICE vehicles by 2025. According to Fox Business, Bank Australia has stated that it would no longer give loans for ICE vehicles by 2025. The bank will continue to make loans on used ICE vehicles until more affordable electric vehicles become available. Despite being a one-of-a-kind alternative in a country with less than 2% EV penetration, the switch may be justifiable. When queried about the policy change, the bank stated that it was implemented to help clients minimize their carbon footprint while rewarding a more cost-effective mode of transportation. While this policy change may assist in the bank achieving its carbon neutrality goal by 2035, it does not specify how it would benefit the bank's operations. By limiting loans for gasoline-powered vehicles, the bank may achieve two goals, reducing the chance of loan taker default and may be preventing future stranded assets. One probable explanation for the bank's decision is that electric vehicles are now considered as a less expensive and labor-intensive means of transportation. EVs reduce the likelihood that the car will require maintenance that the owner cannot afford, leaving the client with a debt to settle and a useless vehicle. Second, if electric vehicles become more widespread and gas vehicles lose significant value, the bank will be left with an asset worth less than the loan if the vehicle is seized and sold, losing them money. Whatever the motivation for the company's new policy, it has been dubbed anything from bad business to Nazi. Will more financial institutions soon follow suit? Will these measures inspire more people to buy electric vehicles? Following that, Elon Musk outlines the extremely careful distribution method for Tesla full self-driving beta 10.69. Earlier this month, during Tesla's 2022 annual shareholder meeting, CEO Elon Musk quipped that full self-driving beta 10.13 will have so many improvements and enhancements to the company's superior driver assist technology that it should be named FSD Beta 10.69. Tesla is taking extra steps with the update's delivery, according to Musk's previous remarks. When questioned on Twitter if FSD Beta 10.69 will still be available on August 20th, Musk stated that only roughly 1,000 Tesla owners would receive the upgrade on that day. Tesla would then gather feedback from this initial group of testers before releasing FSD Beta 10.69.1 to about 10,000 customers the following week. The remaining FSD beta programs would almost definitely be updated to V10.69.2. Musk also indicated that with the release of FSD beta 10.69, Tesla was taking extra safeguards. This will be a very cautious launch due to multiple substantial code modifications, releasing on 8 20 to 1,000 Tesla owners, then 10.69.1 next week to accommodate feedback and release to 10,000 customers, then 10.69.2 the week after that, and release to the rest of the FSD beta, Musk stated. The fact that Tesla has delayed the release of FSD beta 10.69 suggests that the upgrade will be substantial. It also discloses that Tesla is now taking extra care when rolling out new software updates to its FSD beta fleet. Musk and Tesla have not revealed the reasoning for this decision, which is anticipated to be applauded by authorities such as the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Finally, what do we know about the Neuralink and Synchron collaboration that involves the Tesla company? According to a story by Reuters published over the weekend, Elon Musk had contacted Neuralink's competitor Synchron about a potential investment arrangement. Sources claim that Elon Musk contacted Thomas Oxley, who co-founded Synchron and serves as its chief executive officer. In May of this year, Synchron initiated its first human clinical
clinical trials in the United States. These studies are being referred to as the command study. One of Neuralink's rivals, Stentrode, invented a gadget to assist patients suffering from severe paralysis and named it after the company. During July, a spokesman for Synchron reached out to Tesla Rati. He relayed the exciting news that the business had successfully implanted its first Stentrode in a human patient at Mount Sinai West in New York City. Oxley made the following observation at the time. The first in-human implant of an endovascular BCI in the United States is a huge clinical milestone that opens up new possibilities for patients with paralysis. The millions of individuals who have lost the capacity to use their hands to operate digital gadgets are the target audience for our solution. We are thrilled to provide a BCI solution that can be scaled to the market since we believe it has the potential to improve the lives of so many people. The command experiment, which Synchron is conducting, is intended to be the industry's first clinical trial for a brain-computer interface, BCI, permanently implanted in the United States and was approved by the FDA. Well, that marks the end of our video for today. We hope you liked it. On your way out, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.